Hello, I'm Leonard Garrison, Associate Professor of Flute at the University of Idaho. And in this series of videos regarding French intermediate contest solos for flute, I am presenting now the Petite Suite or Little Suite by Henri Busser. This piece has four movements. It's a delightful addition to the repertoire. And as I've explained in a previous video, Henri Busser lived a long time from 1872 to 1973. He was the professor of composition at the Paris Conservatory, and he made an important connection back to the 19th century. He knew most of those composers, Saint-Saëns, Gounod, and so on. He wrote in many media, including operas and chamber music. Um, best known among his flute pieces is the Prelude and Scherzo, one of the famous French conservatory contest pieces that appears in Louis Moïse's collection, Flute Music by French Composers. So the Petite Suite, originally published by Durand, in 1924 functions as a useful stepping stone to these difficult contest pieces. And the difficulty rating of this petite suite is G, as rated by the National Flute Association. This work, the petite suite, opus 12, is also available in a version for piano for hands. And its subtitle is Divertissimo Watto, or a divertissimo is a lighter and serious piece of multiple movements. And he is evoking the atmosphere of the French painter Jean Antoine Watto, uh, who lived from 1684 to 1721. Set scenes of Fete Galante, or courtship parties set out in the open air in the countryside. His de paintings depict idyllic scenes of the nobility at play. So Busset's suite captures this charming atmosphere. So the first movement is titled En Surdine, or Muted. It moves at a relaxed pace. Andante poco ad Adagio means walking and a little slow. The pulse of uh, 63 to the beat is appropriate. And while the flute alternates between common time and 12-8, the beat always remains the same, and the piano always has 12-8. So sometimes the flute is playing two against the piano's three, or even sixteenths about against the triplets in the piano. For instance, at the flute's entrance, in measure three, the dotted eighth and sixteenth, the sixteenth should occur after the piano's third triplet. And then on beats three and four, the flute's eighth notes are two against three compared to the piano. So to prepare for rehearsals with the pianist, practice with a metronome set on triplet subdivisions. So here's my metronome with triplets. And I'm going to play that opening phrase. So two against three. Busser intended this piece also for violin and piano, and the violin puts a mute on for the entire first movement. Thus, the flute should play with a delicate sound, imitating a muted violin with less vibrato than normal. Play a bit slower at the tranquillo and emphasize the first note of each two-note group. Then, 
hasten at the serrer un peu, or quicken a little, stretch the beat at the next tranquillo, and sing out with a full sound, bien chanté. To prevent sharpness, add the right hand ring finger, or R3, to the high E sharps in the first measure. Finger the G sharp to A sharp trill by depressing the lever and moving the left hand middle and ring fingers, or L2 and L3. The second bar of the tranquillo is an echo, so do not add R3 on the high F sharps here. Play very expressively on the E naturals in the third bar, as these require a different color than the previous E sharps. The courtesy accidental in this third bar leads to confusion. The trill is actually E natural to F sharp. So finger E and move the right hand first finger to produce F sharp. The most difficult part of this first movement is the high B with a taper. Start this note mezzo forte to set up the diminuendo. Maintain airspeed throughout the B. Feel the lower lip supporting the air like a shelf and keep the lips relaxed. Now, enchaîné at the end of the movement is the French equivalent to the more common Italian term attacca. So avoid a large break between movements one and two. This is also true of the space between movements three and four, where it also says enchaîné. So let's listen to myself, Leonard Garrison, and my colleague, pianist Roger McVeigh, performing the first movement of Bussel's Petite Suite, En Sourdine. The second movement of Bursel's Petite Suite is Valz Lant, or Slow Waltz. A good tempo for this movement is 54 to the measure, a little slower than typical waltzes. 
Follow all of the subtle dynamic shadings. Busser uses his favorite directive, bien chanté, or well sung, three times here. Note that after the poco accelerando, a tempo slows down to the main tempo. Take a little time at ritino to poco, and even more at cédin a peu, or retard a little bit. So now let's enjoy a performance of this second movement of Bussel's Petite Suite, the Valse Lente. <laughs> Bussel's third movement, the Vieille Chanson, or Old Song, is a gorgeous piece of music. This is a good example of a composer masterfully manipulating simple material to provide a world of color and contrast. So the performer needs to reflect harmonic changes with tone color vibrato and dynamics. As très expressif is very expressive, use a more intense vibrato when you see this marking. Pace yourself so that your loudest point is the più forte, four before the andante poco adagio. Now, a perfect setting for the opening tempo of andante or walking is quarter equals 72. Listen to the piano's 32nd notes at andante poco adagio, a little later on in the piece. The tempo is a little bit slower here than in the opening. So now, let's listen to this wonderful little vieille chanson or old song by Henri Busset, performed by myself, Leonard Garrison, flutist, and pianist, Roger McVeigh. Thank you. 
The fourth movement of Bussel's suite provides a fittingly energetic conclusion. It's titled Scherzetto. Now, a scherzo is a very common term used from Haydn and Beethoven's time on to the present, meaning a joking or playful and light piece. Now, scherzetto means little scherzo. The tempo should be as brisk as possible without inaccurate or sloppy playing. I play at 84 to the bar. Now, on the second page of this movement, même mouvement means the same tempo. Why would the composer write this? Well, the style becomes more legato, but the tempo should not slow down. After that, cédé un peu is a little slower, and retené un peu requires a little retardando. At the end of this movement, push the tempo a little more to provide a brilliant finish. So let's listen to myself, Leonard Garrison, flutist, and my colleague, Roger McFay, pianist, performing this last movement of Bussel's Petite Suite, the Scherzetto. Thank you for listening and good luck or bonne chance.